Welcome. I'm Laura. If you haven't met me before, I'm one of the teachers here at Kaplan, and you have not one, but you have two AP World History experts. Journey and I are here to help you today. Today is a working session. So if you've joined us before, we were looking at high yield content areas and then applying those areas, excuse me, applying those areas to multiple choice questions to get you started thinking and then free response questions. Today, we are focusing on free response questions all hour long. We are super excited to have you and we're gonna make sure that by the end of today's session, you understand the best approach for brainstorming evidence, providing context, summarizing passages and identifying action words. Before we get started though, let's do a bit of a check-in in terms of, excuse me, what you know about the AP changes? Wait, what? If you didn't know this already, you will have a 45 minute free response exam this year. This is good news for you. We are very excited that you're gonna be able to take all the learning that you've done, all of the hard work, the tests, the quizzes, the long hours of studying and get your college credit. We're gonna learn more about what that's gonna look like from College Board in the days to come, but currently this is the information we have. So look through these bullet points read them if you have not read them already, and let us know what questions you have. We'll answer them to the best of our ability, but please know that we are gonna share more as soon as everyone has that information. So we're not holding anything back. It's not some sort of secret society and we're not telling you all the details. This is what we have, this is what we know. The good news is that you do not need to know 1900 to the present because you weren't able to attend school for that time period. Um, so it's the final three units. If you ever look at exactly what College Board lists out, it's those last three units that you will not be responsible for. We don't know exactly what the free response questions are going to look like, so we're going to have a variety of them today. Today's session is going to be scaffolded. So we're going to take a look at a question first. I'm going to walk you through it and we're going to talk about some of the examples. Then we're going to have a middle question and we're going to have you do more of the work on your own. And then a final question, I'll certainly help you brainstorm, but you're actually gonna be writing out a response. So ask yourself, am I ready to do that? The answer is yes. But also, um, do you have paper and pencil if that's how you prefer to work or are you gonna type it? So have in your mind that we're doing scaffold. It's one of the best methods for making sure that you're ready for something is to start with guided practice and then move into your own independent practice. So today will include independent practice. No pressure though, we're here to help you, um, but we definitely wanna get those fingers moving either if you're typing or writing on paper. So keep that in mind. Okay, so for our very first question I mentioned, I'm gonna walk you through this. We're gonna discuss some of the different examples. And then for our second prompt, we're going to have you do a little bit more of the work. So if you're just joining us, we have our very first question here. We're taking a look at the period 1200 to 1450. So the first thing we want to do is consider what we're going to need in our answer. We are for sure going to need a thesis or a claim. We're going to need to provide contextualization and the delicious ingredients of an excellent response sandwich is evidence. So we're going to walk through this. So consider improved transportation technologies and commercial practices. So this is the piece I wanna point out to you all because I want you to be super comfortable when you are taking your test, a 45 minute free response. Let's use some blue. This word and, oh, that was a beautiful circle. Thank you so much. It's, it's probably the lumpiest circle you'll ever see. Well, the good news is it will draw your attention to the word and. You need to get all your points because winning is awesome. And in order to do so, you need to answer both parts of the question. So you need improved transportation technologies and commercial practices. Not one thing, you need two things, not one or the other. I know it sounds silly and I probably sound like a complete dork for emphasizing this, but I want you to practice looking very thoroughly at the prompt so you can get all of your points. There's an and. It is necessary to have both. All right. So like I said, this first one, I'm walking you through it. I'm going to give you an example thesis. 
I'm just gonna get rid of my super lumpy circle. I mean, it's sad to see it go, I know, but I think it's necessary for us to move forward. All right, so this is an example thesis. Go ahead and take a moment to read through it and I'm going to underline some key components that makes it a very strong thesis. I'm gonna do a bit of differentiation here just so that we can pick this apart because I want you to consider what a test prep expert like Journey and I are, what we would do for this question. So the blue part is the first part of the question. It talks about what was here, improved transportation technologies. That's reiterated. So improved ship designs and navigational tools. That is improved transportation technologies. And then we have commercial practices is in orange. So the single underline, that is reiterating to the grader because they're smart, they're not mind readers, that you read the prompt. You have to do that so they know you know what you're saying. And then the double underline is the piece you added to it. You gave value by saying you understand that it increased the reach of the Indian Ocean trade and it intensified trade networks, not the improved ship designs. You're saying the development of money economies. So there's the two pieces that you have to put together, two pieces. If you put one piece, you will not get all your points and then you'll be sad. And we are trying to prevent sadness here. So looking at this in double color is helpful so that you and your brain can think about as we move on to contextualization and then evidence, evidence most certainly you will need to put those two pieces in. And this is a, we have some great um, questions coming in the chat. This is a great time for you to start brainstorming some evidence because we're gonna move on con to contextualization next. If you have some ideas for evidence, you can go ahead and throw them into the chat. The contextualization piece um, there's a lot of different directions you can go in, so I will put that up on the board next. But if you want to think ahead to the evidence, consider what you would want to put in as evidence. So the top part is going to remain. So think about what evidence you would put, and you can start that chat while I'm going over the contextualization. So the contextualization piece, and I've been with you all for almost a week now, and it's by the time we're done with this for this particular cycle, tomorrow, it will have been over a week that I've been talking to you all about contextualization. I'm very serious about this because I want you to get your contextualization points. When graders are looking at your work, you wanna have accurate information. You also want to show that you can think like a historian. You wanna make sure that you are connecting the dots within history, among groups of people, among regions. And that's where you're gonna get points for contextualization. So here are three different examples of contextualization. So you all are putting evidence in the chat because we're gonna finish this out really strong with evidence. But right now, what you have on the board is contextualization. You can use any of these or come up with your own. But what you need to provide is either a cause, something that happened before, a reason that it continued, something that happened during, or you can mention something that happened after, but you do have to provide additional information to round out your answer. So contextualization, providing context, that's the goal. So let's look at these different pieces. And as you read through them, put in the chat, which one you feel most comfortable adding to your own essay. If this was your essay, which one could you talk about with accuracy and with um, clear thought, accuracy and clarity. Which of these? Could you talk about the rise of Islam? Could you talk about the golden age of Islam? Is there something else you would want to put in for your context? Do you want to talk about the extent of the Mongol Empire? Tell us in the chat. And then when we get to evidence, I'll scroll back up to see what you all put for evidence. But right now, 
let's finish out this contextualization piece. What do you feel most comfortable talking about? Rise of Islam, golden age of Islam, extent of the Mongol empire, or do you have something else in mind that contributed to improved transportation technologies and improved commercial practices? So James saying, yeah, I got this. I got the Mongols. I got this. I know this. Eddie's saying rise of Islam. That's what I'm going to talk about. So thinking about these pieces is all part of what we're going to do at the end of our session, which is actually writing down your own response. So at this point, we're brainstorming, we're waking our brains up, we're making sure we feel confident, and then we're going to put pencil to paper or fingers to keyboard, and we're going to have you do your own response at the end of today's session. So make sure you're starting to wake up, engaging with us, and we're going to head you over to some independent practice. I'll help you along the way um, by the end. So we have a goal that we're striving for. All right, so you all already put evidence in the chat. If you have something else you want to add, go ahead and throw it in. But I'm going to go back up. So Jane has some great examples. Alyssa has a good idea. Ariba's got some. Magnetic compass, Mia, perfect. Emily, awesome, I'm loving this. And you all were thinking that through. So when you are constructing a response, your brain isn't naturally gonna say, thesis contextualization evidence, it might, you might say that in your brain, but you're not necessarily gonna move in a linear fashion and that's fine. You can jot down some notes and plan before you start writing. Your test is only gonna be 45 minutes, so you don't have a ton of time, but you can actually think through each of the pieces. And if you come up with a bunch of examples to begin with, that can actually help you form your thesis. So there's no wrong way to do this. As long as you have all the ingredients to go into a high scoring response, you can get your points. So that's what we're here to help you do is to consider what are the pieces that you need to work on so we want you to reflect throughout today's session. What things did I feel really confident about and what do I know I need to work on? And then you actually got to find time in your schedule. And I mean, you might be at home more than you think um, and, and do this type of practice, do some studying review to make this happen. So let me point out before we move on to our middle example, we're going to go ahead and take a look at these pieces of evidence and decide why it is so compelling to include. So my, the first one that's in the list, we have increased knowledge of patterns of monsoon winds. That's good. If you put that in you say, they studied the monsoon winds, they were able to, able to travel more safe. They, no, let me back up. They studied monsoon winds. Great, that's accurate. It's not enough. You have to say how that improved transportation. So you gotta be careful when you're providing evidence, you don't wanna feel like you stopped in the middle of a conversation. So you know what it feels like when your friend is saying something and then gets distracted. You're like, wait, what happened? Who did what? You don't want your grader to feel that way. You wanna make sure you finish the thought. So I'm gonna go ahead and point out increased knowledge of patterns of monsoon winds. Great, evidence, awesome contributed to safer, more reliable transportation. So double underlined for that. So make sure when you are planning out your responses, you are planning out high scoring responses. You'd get credit for monsoon wins, but you want all of your points. You wanna explain how it contributed to improve transportation. Okay, now we have new tools. We saw a lot of examples in the chat. You all had a good list going there. So in addition, the compass and Astrolab, those are two examples. There are other ones, most, most certainly, but don't just list them out. Make sure you mention why they were accurate. Okay, so that's in blue. I'm gonna change to orange because I feel like maybe I had been mentioning, I, I'm gonna try to be as annoying as possible to make you remember this. So when you're taking your 45 minute FRQ and you're like, oh yeah, that teacher, Laura, remember how annoying she was? She just kept saying not one, but two, and you're going to get all your points. You can send me hate mail. It'll be fine. <laughs> no, I really want you to not drop off 
halfway in the middle of an LEQ, I want to make sure you get all your points. So if there is an and to your question, you're going to write the second part. Can I hypnotize? Is that possible? You are going to write the second part. I'm the worst. Moms are the worst. All right, so we need to make sure you have some orange in your response because we want you to get your points for evidence. And actually in the chat, I saw a lot of us leaning towards the improved transportation te technologies. That's great. You need evidence for the commercial practices. So the first thing is there were new commercial practices. You have to say what they were. We've got credit and new currencies. And you wanna round out your answer and actually that's not a double underline, that's part of the first one. Say what they are and then say that it facilitated trade. And you can even expound on that. And then we have providing protection along the Silk Road. And then it's missing a piece right here. You'd have to round that answer out and say that it specifically made it less risky and the most risky, more successful. I can tell you, people generally don't want to go do stuff that's super, super dangerous. So as the Mongol Empire was providing protection and there was more of a systematic approach to doing it, it was a lot easier for more people to want to do it. If people are like, oh yeah, you get on a camel, they never come home. That's really not a good sell for a new job. I feel like that LinkedIn profile or that LinkedIn post, it, it's not going to get a lot of followers. People are be like, eh, I, I, I really feel like I don't want to hop on a camel and not come home. So keep in mind that there are specific things that happened during this time period that made it more, there were more incentives for people to try this. It was still pretty risky, but it was a lot easier for people to travel. They knew that other people had done it and there were a lot more people going along. And yes, you can, the use of merchants, absolutely, you can use that for part of the commercial practices. So let's say you don't know a lot about the Mongol Empire, hopefully you do, uh, but if you don't, you don't have to use them. You can just think about the different trade routes and think about what did make that possible, what was new. And you're not going to just talk about the commercial trade practice, the commercial practices, you're going to do both, two pieces. So if your prompt has two pieces, you are going to answer both pieces. You're just never going to get rid of that voice in your head. All right. This was our first, this was the most guided version that we're going to be doing today. So this was the, the first step. We're moving right along. We're going to help you brainstorm evidence and pr provide context. We're going to be a little bit more um, deliberate in having you take the time to brainstorm some evidence. And then we're going to compare it with what's up here. So you're gonna have some more independent practice. And then the final one we're gonna look at for today, you're gonna to actually write down a response. So before we can start having you brainstorm evidence, we need to figure out what this is asking. So I'm actually gonna stop talking for a moment, surprising, and let you read all three parts. Go ahead and take a few moments to read all three parts of this question. So I had mentioned, if any of you had attended some of the earlier sessions from this cycle that we're doing, I had mentioned this very, it sounds super high tech, a vertical scan. It's actually just looking at the first words and all of the question parts. Um, we're going to put this into practice right now. So we're looking at identifying. So we just have to point out something and then explaining, you have to actually analyze. So notice the differences here because this will, we're not trying to make your work harder, we're actually trying to make it a little bit easier. Whenever you have a question and we love them, the ones that just say identify, those are the best because that's the easier question to, or response to write. You just have to point out something. 
So you're just pointing it out. That's it. Just identify. Explaining you actually do want to analyze. So it's a little bit bulkier of a response. So keep that in mind. When it's just identify, I mean, it's like a where's Waldo. Do, 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 find something that makes sense. Explain it clearly. You're good. Analyze. It's There are more pieces to it. One other thing I want to point out in here before we hop into doing part one is that there are two time periods within this within this span, two time periods, 1200 to 1450 and 1450 to 1750. You don't have to, you're not gonna pick one that spans the whole thing. That doesn't make any sense. What the, what College Board, the people who write this, want you to be able to do is talk about whatever you know best. So you, maybe you were sick at the beginning of the year and you didn't study as hard as you did in the middle of the year or vice versa, or you just are naturally better at learning stuff that happened even longer ago. Whatever the case is, you are an individual and the test is your time to shine, to get your points. So you wanna pick whatever you know best, not me or Journey, but what you know best. So that's the important piece there that I want to make sure I stress for everybody that they gave you a lot of room to work within for you, not certainly to help you, not as a punishment in any way. Okay, so we want to identify one factor that facilitated the growth of empires in this period. We're going to give you time to brainstorm just examples. You don't have to write out the response. We're going to have you brainstorm examples. We're going to give you a minute and a half to do it. And then we'll compare it with what we have up here. Brainstorm examples, as soon as you have them, you can write them in the chat. <clears throat> Thank you so much for participating in the chat. For those of you who aren't typing in, that's fine if you feel you'd rather watch. We do strongly encourage you to try typing something in. It's a no judgment zone and we want to make you feel like you're really getting as much out of this as you possibly can. So absolutely try it out. See if you can throw something in the chat for a, one factor that facilitated the growth of empires. And then this next piece, I'm gonna go ahead and put a bunch of examples on the board. I want you to consider what you came up with and how it compares to what we have. So we've got navigational innovations, larger navies, and this I saw in the chat, gunpowder technology. So think about what you came up with and again, these are examples. These aren't the final response. You'd have to provide additional information. Um, you'd have to put it in sentence form. You cannot put it in bullets to get all your points. So for the second bullet point, you wouldn't want to put just, you can start larger navies allowed European powers to conquer trading posts in particular. And then you'd want to state a navy and state what trading posts they had. The more detail you can give, the easier it is for you to get your points. When I was talking about how you just have to point out, the difference between this one and parts B and C is that you just have to provide information. 
You don't have to say European powers were able to build larger navies because no, you just have to say that the larger navies allowed them to conquer trading posts. You don't have to provide any analysis of the information. So that's the difference between A and B. So identifying means point it out, provide information, be as clear as you can. The next part is a little bit trickier and that's why we're doing it right now. Okay, so now we are gonna take a look at explaining one way in which empire building among European maritime empires. So we're comparing the maritime and the land empires. So I'm actually gonna put the examples on the board and I'm gonna give you a little time to look through them. And then for part C, we're gonna have you brainstorm your own. So this is scaffolded approach. We're helping you all on this step and then part C, you're gonna come up with examples again. So I'm gonna be quiet now so you can take a look at these examples. So take just a moment to look through, through these examples. Okay, so now you're gonna put in the chat, which of these four, you can just put one, two, three, or four, you feel like you could right this minute, I'm not gonna have you actually do it, so it's a bit of an empty threat, but right this minute, what could you write out using three or four sentences and explain it well? And if you're comparing things, it's helpful to have two things. So if you pick number one, you would wanna know which two ethnic or religious or oh, which two empires were able to incorporate diverse ethnic or religious groups. If you think you can go with number two, you would want to know which two empires did that. So you have to be able to show how they were similar. So to get all your points for this, you'd have to say this particular empire did this, which was very similar to this empire because both accomplished this. So you, there, there's more to B and C. I think number four is a really good example. Um, one direction you can go in. I don't know that many people would choose that one. Those are a little bit harder to explain, the decentralized regions. Conquest of weaker groups, that's a and weaker, not by our opinion, but in terms of able to conquer. So when you're, when you're writing your responses, if you're writing and you're talking about really difficult times in history, the graders are not gonna judge what you're saying in terms of their personal beliefs and opinions. They're just looking for accurate information. So if you say weaker groups and you're explaining just that they were easier to conquer, that is absolutely 100% fine. You do not have to worry about the most politically correct way to say something because as we know, things change over time anyway, and we're always trying to be as respectful as we can. This test though is about testing your knowledge. So if anyone's concerned about that, please know that the graders are not gonna be sitting there and thinking, wait, what is, I mean, I don't really agree with that. It's, you're just talking about history. So do it in the most clear way you can and, and don't stress about the, the smaller pieces of exactly which words you use to say it. So just a, just a shout out to any of our, um, students who were thinking about that. All right, so we've got similarities. We've got those juices flowing. Now it's your time to shine. You're going to go ahead and give us examples. You don't have to put a whole response, but examples of differences. I'm going to put part C up here. Examples of differences. We're going to give you a minute and a half to brainstorm that, and then we're going to take a look at what you put in the chat and what we have here up on the board. Examples of differences.
All right, I was looking at what we have in the chat. Oftentimes students feel more confident doing either the similarities or the differences. That's fine. Do whichever one's easiest for you, write your answer down to that first and then come back to the other side of it. Because oftentimes whatever you were brainstorming for differences then makes you think about the similarities or vice versa. So we wanna make sure that you know the approach to these questions are flexible. So let's take a look at some of the high scoring examples that Journey and I wanna share with you and compare it to what you all were saying in the chat. One thing I wanna stress is that, well, it's important to acknowledge that the European empires were by sea, maritime, um, and the Asian land empires were on land, that can't be your only answer. That can't be the only part of your answer. Um, you have to then, because it's an explained question, so you can't point out like, oh, well, Portugal went across the sea, but um, the Mongol Empire stayed on land. You need to actually state specifically how an aspect was different. Because they had to travel across the sea, it was different. Because they were on land, they did this. So just be careful not to land too heavy on what was already provided. So that's the takeaway. So if you were just going to explain that it was sea versus land, that's only the first part of it. You can certainly include it, but that shouldn't be your, your, the only part of your answer. So anybody who's wondering about that, if you can just like use what they gave you a little bit, just not entirely. Okay, so looking at our examples, we have outposts, um, meaning that they're more remote locations where the land, let me do different colors because I'm going to get myself confused. Let's do orange. So the blue is going to be maritime and the orange I'm going to have as land. So this is a great example of how you can take what they gave you and then put a little extra information and have it be a great response. So you can think, okay, wait, so they're by sea and then the other ones are by land. What, how would that be different? So you can think through your own thought process and come up with something great without having to dive too deep into stuff that might be beyond what you can remember. So use what they gave you, but make sure you explain it really well. Our next option is we have mercantilist policies versus taxes. And finally, we have tolerant of religious beliefs, wrong color, just kidding. Course Christianity. I don't want to get myself backwards here. There we go. Okay, so here are great examples. My question to you is not going to be which one did you like best. I want you to think back to all parts of this question. I'm going to leave this slide up though in case anybody's taking notes on it. Remember the first one was just identify. Then it was explain similarity and explain difference. There were three parts of this short answer question. I want you to put in the chat, be honest, how many of those parts do you feel like you could have answered pretty well today? Do you feel like you could have done the first one because it was identify? Could you have done two of them because you were better at the similarities versus differences? Or did you have all three down and you're feeling good? So check in with yourself, think, all right, or am I at zero? Do I have a lot of studying to do? Do I wanna look at my day, the days between now and when the test is and figure out how many hours a day I wanna study? It's easier to do it by week, just letting you know. No one wants to study every single day of from now until the test. It's not the best plan. It's like an exercise regime. You need a day of rest somewhere here and there. So what do you think? Do you think you could have done zero, one, two, or three? How are you feeling? Are you feeling awesome? You could totally have done it. And you know what? I'm going to test out this theory because for our final, it's hard to believe we're over halfway done here, our final exercise of the day, there's going to be the most amount of independent practice so that you can have a really good check-in point and figure out how much more time and effort you need to put into this. And it's fine. Tell us zero. Tell us if you're stressed about it. Get your feelings out here. We're all here together. There's so many people in the same boat as you. You are for sure an individual and you have to find your own path to feeling great about test day, but you can commiserate all together and say, oh man, this is harder than I thought it was going to be. Goodness. Thank goodness I'm here today. So definitely give yourself a pat on the back for being here so that you can recognize where you need to study some more 
and know that there are helpful approaches like a vertical scan, knowing which answer is going to be the least complex and which ones require more analysis. You already learned something. That's fantastic. Yes, so give yourself credit for being here today and know that for our next step, we are going to have more independent practice. So coming up this, this final one we're gonna look at, but there's no pressure. There's plenty of people who are feeling good and are gonna put their answers in the chat. If you don't feel comfortable sharing, that's fine. And you can just let us know that. We're all here. This is a time for you to feel good. All right, so I've got my blue and my orange. It looks all super pretty. And now we're going to be heading to our final task. So your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to help me summarize a passage and to identify action words. So this next one, I know, it's, I know what it's gonna be because you know, I made this presentation for you. So this next one is going to include a stimulus. It's the first one that we've had for today. That means we're going to analyze what somebody else said. And if you were here yesterday, you know for sure you have to include information from that stimulus in your answer. So we're gonna give you a chance to do that, but we're going to be helping you along the way and giving you plenty of time to do the different pieces. So if you have not already, grab a piece of paper and a pencil if that's how you prefer to work or have some other window open so that you can type in your responses as we go along. So we are going to use this passage to answer all parts of the question that follows. And actually, you know what I'm gonna do? So it's a little bit of a challenge getting everything on the screen here. I played around with it a while. Um, I'm gonna hop over here so you just know what the different questions are. So that was a little jarring. I know you saw the passage really quick. I just wanna give you a heads up um, that we need to be thinking about historical development. That's what we're looking for in the passage. And we're going to be talking about architecture. So I'm gonna stay on this and stop talking so you can just read it and then I'll hop back. And then when we get to part A, you'll have both pieces on the screen. So I just wanted to give you a heads up of where we're headed. So we're gonna be using the passage to allude to historical development. We're gonna talk about large scale architecture and then political structures. So it's just so you have an idea of what this all comes together. So this is from our AP World History Prep Plus book. Um, but then putting it into slides is always a, a tiny bit of a challenge. So we're gonna go back to over here. Okay, so we need to understand what this person is saying. I'm gonna go ahead and um, give you some time to read through this. So just a moment. I'm gonna give you a minute and a half and then we'll talk about exactly what is in what this author is saying. So go ahead and read this for a minute and a half, focusing on the parts you do understand, and then we'll help you out with the parts that you're not sure of. I'm having trouble finding a spot for it. All right, there you go.
All right. So if you have an idea of what this particular person was saying, feel free to put it in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the board so you all can check in with what your thinking was and what we have up here. And then we're going to brainstorm together and then you'll be able to write your own response for part A. So looking at the, so I write the way I think. So I was thinking that Gothic was held in contempt, but the author thinks it's genius. Um, held in contempt means it was not looked favorably, looked upon favorably. So I have trouble sometimes I speak more difficultly than I intend. So if you have any notes up here on the board that you're like, wait a second, what does that mean? So my note to help you understand, you may not understand. So definitely let us know, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. And then the second point I made that Gothic buildings inspired medieval faith. That one is a little more clear. So keep in mind though, so let's say you read this and you're like, oh, I just don't really quite understand what they're saying. Parts A, B, and C are completely separate. So even if you feel like your answer to part A is not the strongest because of what you were provided in the question stem, um, you can still get all your points for B and C. So certainly don't give up, but definitely know that they are graded separately. So our next order of business is to take this information, take a few more notes, and then form our actual answer for part A. So as I mentioned before, this is the whole question, but we're just looking at A right now because B and C are separate from the stimulus. You can get all your points without mentioning this passage. And in particular, Part B says not specifically mentioned in the passage. So that would be outside information that you need to provide. Um, doing this vertical scan, we love answer choice A because it's just to point it out. We don't have to do an analysis. Describing, we just need to give some details. And then the last one could be the harder one, um, depending on how you think. Perhaps analyzing is exactly what you want to be doing. And that is explaining, you do have to analyze it. So identify is uh, um, not as deep level thinking, describe, add some details, and then explain is more of an analysis. Okay, so to help us formulate our answer, and by our, I mean your, we are looking specifically at the first paragraph. And in particular, this portion will be helpful. And the notes we have for this are here. Now you can go in a different direction with this, absolutely. On the next slide, I'm gonna go ahead and put up a fully formed response. But right now what I want you to do is read over the prompt, look at the first paragraph, look at what we highlighted. And I want you to type out if you prefer to type, you can write if you prefer to write. Typing is probably easier because then you can share it with us. And I want you to come up with a full response, full sentences, proofread it so that it looks like it makes sense. Um, mostly because you don't want to confuse your reader. You want it to be as clear as possible. And then you're going to share it. So we're going to give you three minutes to write out your response. And you can start putting your answer in the chat as soon as you have it. Um, if you're done before three minutes, you can go grab a drink of water and then hop back or bring us with you if, you are, if we're on your phone or tablet. So go ahead and take three minutes and you're gonna write out a full response. You can do it and push yourself to do it. This is really healthy for you to practice.
I want to sincerely thank everyone who participated, whether you put your answer in the chat or you're working at home and held on to your answer yourself. This session is for you. And the more you participate in your own way, whatever works for you, the easier it is to feel like you really got something out of this because you are thinking and engaging. I'm gonna go ahead and put a sample answer up on the screen. It does have three sentences, but as we were discussing in the chat, one to two is fine for Identify. Um, so this one happens to have three sentences, so I'll pause so you can read through it and I'll start underlining some pieces that were really important. Um, but we had some great answers in the chat, one to two sentences, some a little bit longer, but really for Identify, one to two is fine. So I'm going to put green as the pieces that are really going to pop within your response. So you, this person, this was written by an AP expert, but this person put in classical Greek and Roman text. That's something that you would have to pull from your memory and add. So the quote itself is important so you can show that you understood the prompt. And then explaining that there was increased contacts through trade. And then specifically that green part that I just underlined, that's the really delicious part of this evidence sandwich. And then the idea that it sparked new art, philosophy, and science, that's helpful to add. There aren't any specifics included in that, but there doesn't have to be. You've already added in those green sprinkles of important evidence. So this is the only portion that requires you to reference the text. The next two portions, we're going to help you brainstorm, and then you're going to write it out just like we did for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and all right, next up, part B. We have three different ways we could go with this. Large scale architecture. So that's something that people see every day. It is very prominent. And there are three general trends we look at. You can either legitimize rule, facilitate religious practice, or you could provide defense. You can go in any of these directions or another one. These are just the most popular. And the sample response I'm going to put up on the board is going to be to legitimize role. So just a heads up, that's where we're headed with that. So what we want you to do is we want to, you to take three and a half minutes. Oh, no, I'm going to give you three minutes. Just kidding. Um, three minutes to brainstorm and write, start writing your response. And then by the time I show the example that I'll have, um, you'll be done writing your response. So we're going to give you three minutes. So again, we were doing the brainstorming before and now it's a little bit more independent, but we did give you some categories to consider. So take a deep breath. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to brainstorm and write a fantastic response. Once you have one, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. So you're answering question B, and these are three different areas you can three different directions, don't use all three, pick one or pick your own direction and get your points. On your mark, get set, go.
If you're stuck on brainstorming, I'm going to go ahead and reveal some examples you can use. If you didn't come up with your own, feel free to use the ones we have on the board. If you're still running, that's not a problem. We thank everyone who's already put in an answer. So if you're looking at this slide, just make sure you have zeroed in on the example you wanna use if you weren't able to come up with one on your own. I'm gonna go ahead and give you the example answer and then you can do C on your own. So taking a look at this, so like I said, I knew what was coming up next. We were doing legitimized role. Oops, let me just undo that. Just a moment, Ooh. hold on one sec, sorry y'all. And I apologize for the background noise. We have someone who's sad about, you know, life. And when you're two, life's hard. Okay, so we have showcasing wealth, power, divine approval, and then specifically a specific temple. So if that's the one you remembered and you put it in your response, fabulous. If you remembered something else, that is great too, but it's the specifics that added a lot of value here. And it's for this one, um, there's just one, two sentences and it's fine as an answer. So take a look at what you wrote, look at what we have up here and consider how much more studying you need to do. If you haven't already planned to join us tomorrow, we certainly hope you will. I'm gonna go ahead and put the final one up on the board just so you can see it. Um, and you are more than welcome to go ahead and do it on your own. So for this particular one, if you wanna go ahead and jot it down and do it on your own, we're always, Happy to have you use our book. This is actually right from our AP Prep Plus book. Um, or y'all can um, chat with Journey. She'll still be in the chat for a little bit. We had so much fun with you today. You did a lot of work. Think, you, think of all the analysis, all of the digging deep into your brain you did today. All of this you did because you want your point. So please come and join us tomorrow. We're gonna to do the same thing. It's gonna be scaffolded. We'll start you off with the first steps. We'll help you brainstorm. And then you're gonna put pencil to paper or you're gonna type out your response and you can say, I practice AP World History. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you were here with us today. We really do enjoy this. We're that big of dorks, we really are. Thank you. Please stay tuned for AP World History. And then we've got bio in another hour. Thanks so much.